Welcome to another night of Shutter Talk uh, with Frank Pally Photography, and we have a very, very special guest, Paul Wright, uh, all the way from Whistler, British Columbia, is going to be joining us. And uh, Paul's got a special presentation uh, for us about uh, authentic imagery tonight. And uh, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing uh, and hearing Paul's presentation. And uh, I hope uh, while you're all waiting, you all did a little jig out there, did a little dance and warm up for tonight. And uh, if you're out in the chat, please make sure you hit that like button and say hi to everybody. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of go down the list here quickly. Uh, and again, we've got Larry Leslie. Welcome, Larry. And uh, we have Mike. Drozdowski, and I can't pronounce his last name. I always have problems with it. And we have BB, and I don't know who BB is, but we've got BB out there. Wayne Wilton's out there. Tina Pelly's out there. And we've got, uh, who else uh, just dropped in? We have Drum and Detect. Welcome, Joel, all the way from the east coast of the USA. Thank you for coming. And... Uh, uh, we'll uh, get you going here shortly. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for coming, joining us. I have uh, uh, my guest in the back room waiting. I'm just going to unmute his mic and get him ready to come up. And uh, uh, anyway, join me with a big uh, hello and welcome to our man, Paul. Hello, Paul, and welcome. Well, welcome. How's my audio doing there, Frank? Your audio is great. Great. Good. Very good. Okay. All right. And we're defocused enough on the image that it doesn't look like it's uh No, you're looking good. Good. Okay. You're good. looking good, good. man. You you're look like good. a snowflake. You've got all the all the uh, the snowflakes from Whistler with your hat and your 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 shirt and uh, yeah. Wow. Welcome. Well, I, I was out cross country skiing for a fair while this afternoon and I got to admit I got a bit cold and so hot bath and a and a and a uh, sweater and a toque. I'm oh. warming up. 
it'll work. Yeah, definitely get you going for sure. Anyway, it's welcome. Yeah, I'm glad that you were able to make it. And and uh, so, where you get? Did you get some fresh snow up in Whistler today? No, 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 it's it's definitely spring conditions, but they've still got three and a half meters up at the cross country area, so it's got a ways to go yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, just gonna get get a go before we get into your presentation. Just a couple of questions for you. Uh, uh paul now how long uh have you been in, in photography what what got you going in photography uh my aunt age eight she took me into a dark room i was hooked oh okay, okay. <laughs> she was a pr professor at U at university of toronto and uh i just thought it was so magic she took me down to the uh, university lab and we went through one of those light blind labyrinths you know you turn left turn right turn right again and go into a magic room with red coming on and and uh, yeah, I was, uh, so that really got me going. I've always been a photographer. And at age 19, I couldn't decide whether to be a full-time wildlife photographer or go into medicine. And it seemed at that time, you didn't worry about economics or anything yeah, or how yeah. you support yourself, but you just thought, what would be most interesting? But the medicine seemed more challenging. And so I ended up uh, at, in a medical career, but I always was a photographer. I've always sort of had a camera with me and, and uh, then I had to um, uh, withdraw. I had to retire early from, from medicine because of a medical condition. So I was retired for about a week, and then I became a full-time photographer. Yeah. Uh, went back to I, – I did it full blast. I went back to Langara and took courses. And, and uh, so for the last uh, 14 years, I've been um, – or sorry, 13 years, I've been working at it professionally. Yeah. Well, you've been, I mean, you've really come a long ways, you know, definitely, you know, with your in 13 years to where you are now, it's, uh, yeah, definitely you've, you've had a, uh, a major, major, uh, growth in, in your photography and, and it's, it's, it's kind of nice to see. And, 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 and it's kind of fun that we're still able to, what we thought of as a kid, we're able to kind of continue as we get into our adult life to, to be able to, to do that. So, yeah. I haven't hit my adult life yet. I haven't quite grown up, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's good goes. to be. Yeah. Yeah, good to hear that. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, I haven't just, quite yeah. grown up yet. Oh, absolutely. No now, uh, in terms of uh, like, you had a move from the Vancouver Lower Mainland to Whistler. Now, uh, in terms of your photography, I think it was a great move. How how are you? Uh, do you do you have any reservations of doing that or? No, no, not at all. It was great. Um, what I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll delve on it a bit in my presentation, but I've had lots of stepping stones in my photography. And probably the biggest one is I really envelop the type of photography that's in front of me or that challenges me. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the first number of years, it was, uh, you know, getting my skill set down, getting my technical parts down. And I jumped in with a, a partner in the photography world, which I would really, you know, if you're serious about this, the best thing you can do is go and work with somebody else and shoot with somebody else. Eventually you'll find somebody that really pushes you, that really teaches you. So that was sort of the early part of my, of my career. And I did a lot of commercial work and I was totally out of my element. I was doing a lot of portraiture work, big portraits, big groups. And that was all pretty much new to me, yeah. uh, but it really pushed me as a photographer and so that was, you know, that was all based in Vancouver. I started doing a lot of commercial work with, um, you know, the Canadian Olympic Committee and with the uh, Canadian Press, a lot of it around sports and things. So it was a natural place to be. A lot of studio work, too. I spent a lot of time in the studio. But since I've been up at Whistler, it's been more, um, I've gravitated towards the great outdoors a lot more, which is my comfort zone. And uh, so it's been, a, it's been a great move, and I still have contact if I want to be back in the studio or back shooting commercial. But, um, you know, I'm 70 years old now, so I get to sort of a little bit retire from the commercial mm -hmm. world yeah. in photography. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. Good stuff. Hey, listen, I know uh, we've got uh, a, a great presentation from you, and I'm going to delve right into it. We're going to start because... <laughs> Um, uh, there's a lot of information that we want to pass on to everybody. And uh, so uh, I have brought that up and I'm just going to stop. And what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to make you a little bit uh, larger. Um, and let me just uh, get you a little bit bigger here. And we'll, oh, 
I just keep one. Frank, I'm I'm big enough. I just need my, need my talk bigger. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, listen. It. Uh, let me just. Uh, uh, what we got here? Uh, I got you around, and for some reason, uh, where are you? Okay, there you are. I got to kind of bring up, up the top here. Hold on. And. Um, this is like Dr. Spock. I feel like I'm being being. Oh doctor. yeah, yeah. Well, the, the screen now. Um, do you see it? Is it large enough for you to, to see? Because that's just the the black part. Let's just. You tell me when you're ready to go on to the next screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it here. I'm gonna bring up our next screen here, and then we'll get just going from here. All right. Okay. So do, do people have a full screen they're watching at home or they got they the have the full their full computer screen or TV whatever they're okay. watching on yep yep all right okay this takes me back I, when I was an orthopedic surgeon I gave lots of talks on dual projector slides or three and had them you know uh, 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 columnated and completely in sync and uh, it would be the call next slide next slide yeah, next, you yeah. know was, so I'm going back to the future here. Okay. So, so anyway, um, yeah, I'll get going if that's okay. Yep. No, absolutely. Yep. And we've got uh, our our person out in the audience saying images are perfect. Good. Okay. Well, I haven't taken a perfect image yet, so you must be looking at something else. But I'm working on it. I'll get there someday. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, the objective of and thank you very much, Frank, for asking me to uh, to um, you know come and and uh, be part of this. I I. Uh, I got to know Frank in an interesting way. We sort of uh, met shooting dogs. You know, the first time I met him was at the sidelines of a, of a whippet competition. And I've run into him in many different settings. He's a man who gets out there and really works. He, he, he really walks the walk of, of shooting lots of images. And uh, I encourage all to sort of tag along with him if you can in his methodology and his photography and certainly the focus that he's had. You can't help but have it, uh, you know, come off on you. So uh, the objective tonight, first of all, is to really um, focus as, as to where you are as a photographer. And uh, I'm not going to show a whole lot of technical stuff here. I may stop once in a while just to talk technically because it's always fun. But really, this is more about letting you be comfortable where you are as a photographer and how you can maximally push yourself to the next level in your photography by just being yourself. And so there'll be some interesting sort of uh, turns in here, some which you might object to quite a bit. And if you do, it's important that you internalize that and think, well, what would I do as a photographer in this situation? What would be the, the next thing that I would do to get myself moving forward? And um, I want you to try to place yourself into everything that I say. So I want everything that I give to you as a, as a teaching module, as an objective, as images, and translate them into the type of photography that you do and take that forward because I would like you to sort of walk away from this evening feeling really good about what you do already but feeling even more comfortable about what you're going to do in your photography and how to take it forward. Next slide. Okay. So yeah. the... Um, it just takes a second to come up. Okay. With yeah. All right. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll learn to be faster on the advancing. I'll, yeah. I'll learn to talk into it. Yeah. Um, so I just like to say to each of you, don't need to go and recreate yourself. There's such a tendency in today's photographic world to seeing the latest thing on Joe McNally and suddenly you've got four SB900s in your back pocket and you're, you're being a, a Joe McNally. You don't really need to go to recreate yourself to be a great photographer. Next. Okay. And, and I'll, I mean, maybe I'll just do the magic wand there, if, if that's okay. Oh, go so, ahead. Yeah, I'm just... Go uh, ahead. Yeah, hit yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so to, be, to be a great photographer, you just need to be yourself. And this may sound like a very banal thing to say, but really, you just have to be as much of you as you possibly can when you're photographing. The world wants to see what you're all about. And there'll be a recurrent theme in this, but... Um, you know, don't sort of wander in your mind that I've got to go take what everybody has to offer you in photography. Look at it and see how you can actually um, envelop that and make it part of the photography that you're already good at and that you'll get much better at. Uh, next slide. And I think it's very important that you go ahead and, and work very hard at, at being yourself. 
I should just enter a disclosure here that I have no conflicts of interest whatsoever. I have no business involvement that would conflict with tonight's talk. Next slide. So uh, uh, as I said earlier, I was an orthopedic surgeon till uh, 2008 and then suddenly I had to stop for medical reasons and within a month I was at Langara taking photographic courses and uh, I, I never completed a degree there because I realistically found that I was better off cherry picking them. There were an awful lot of them that already had experience or as much experience as the people teaching them. I hate to say that, but in the business areas and things, I kind of had that nailed down already. And there were some courses in landscape and things I didn't complete because I, you know, I've been doing it since my twenties. And so I had to go and focus on very specific areas. And that included mostly um, lighting, 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 and lighting. And then I took some more lighting courses because I really knew very little about studio lighting, how to work with natural light. And so that was an area I spent probably two years taking every course I could possibly find in the, in the world on, on that sort of thing. So uh, that was just very important to me. So I looked at my weaknesses, thought, what am I gonna need to really envelop myself and become a good photographer? Where are things moving? And and to me, that was the one focus that I really put a lot of time into was to become a very good a lighting technician, to understand it. Went into into the art world, you know, learning about the great painters and how they studied their light. Um, and it was a wonderful springboard for, for moving forward. You can go on, Frank, next. Mm -hmm. um, and if we have so, any questions um, on the audience, they could maybe post it in the... Uh... Uh, chat and I'll, I'll bring it up to Paul to, to answer as we're going along so okay and we can stop as we go along too um, if I hear any I can't hear the audience so I don't know who's snoring out there yeah I know problem. we'll have to uh, put the electric uh, cattle yeah. prod out there yeah yeah I just okay. want to say that whatever I've undertaken in photography or 99% of the time I've had a blast doing it I had re I've had really fun people to work with energetic groups. I work a lot with teams when I'm doing photographic uh, jobs and I've, you know, had some big corporate jobs like $28,000 downtown corporate jobs. You got to have a big team to pull on that off in, yeah. in three hours. So, um, you know, it, it's, I've kind of got out there and tasted all the world's in, words in it. This little project I did, which was one for um, a, a presentation, um, a magazine sort of thing was aging is the solution, not the problem. I, Except for Wayne, I don't know who else can identify in that age group in here. But yeah. um, anyway, it's uh, I, I just have had I just wanted to, from this image show that I've really had a great time and work with great groups in, in doing all these kind of next slide, all these things that have been coming up. So I did um, uh, quite a bit of work in the first uh, several years positioning myself and I ended up uh, and it doesn't just happen. You got to go work your butt off. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I was it, I was able to get in with the Canadian Press Archives, so I was taken on by them. And, and that just meant that I was suddenly authentic, like I actually could, had credentials to go and, you know, shoot at an event or get permission to be into, you know, different events for photography. I, I wanted to really place myself, and that helped quite a bit. Next slide, please. Um, but there were many things that I undertook initially and analogous uh, thing, you, you can think about them too. Like I did so much freelance work on speculation. So if there was a, this is an event called the, the Queen of the Peak over in Tofino. And uh, next slide, please. And I, I really, um, you know, I was over there with no expectations of being able to get a, any, a piece of work out of this. So, you know, I was on the wire. I was, you know, feeding to newspapers, uh, magazine, to the Canadian Press Archives. Um, advertisers. Anyway, all these different things, you know, came together in order to, whoops, we got a fair bit ahead. Just leave it there, Frank. I'll okay, catch yeah. up to it. Just stay there. So all these things came into position to allow me to, to, uh, you know, get myself situated where I could, I could then, um, you know, be a, a, a realistic photographer that people wanted to hire, whether it was press or whether it was in a commercial sense. And the commercial big jobs came from you know, all this early involvement in the press. It's also, it's high pressure, it puts you out there. I'm not saying everybody on this call has to go and start shooting press images. You can do whatever it is, but you need to involve yourself with a responsible endpoint in order to get these images. So um, I started working with the Canadian press and eventually they gave me assignments. 
next image, please. Yeah. And these assi these assignments, um, you know, really um, are interesting because they're they're on the go. You have to know what you're doing quickly. Um, just a technical point on this one: anybody who's shot in a hockey rink knows that it's a dull black hole, overhead lights, but it bounces off the ice, but it doesn't really light up their faces. So, in a job like this, you know, you're going to have to show up with a um, a number of things. One of one of the least of which is a helmet, so you can get on the ice. You're not allowed in a rink mostly unless you have a helmet on, so you know that in advance. You'd know to bring a portable light. I, I use an Allen Chrome portable system. And so I was able to, you know, scatter light across this and for the most part bounce it down off the off the ice to get nice images of these people's faces because inside hockey masks with overhead lights, it's just black, 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 black. So little technical next next slide. Little technical things like this are something you have to kind of, you know, be on top of. And, I know and you and I also, uh, we did the uh, uh, fencing. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I remember how light the lighting is so terrible in these big uh, arenas that uh, you get into. And you do need yeah. that, uh, your lights, that uh, portable lighting. Yeah. And, and uh, the lighting is always going to be awful wherever you go. It's a natural thing for photographers, especially editorial photographers, always complain about the light. But you have to work with it. It's what you've got. And those that make great images in difficult light are a notch above everybody else in photography. So getting out there and getting challenged, being able to pull it off, that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, very often, this is short notice. When I got notice about this job, uh, I lived in Burnaby at the time. This was at a Burnaby rink close to me. I think they knew we were you know, on top of each other. But there'd been a 30-minute call that the Stanley Cup was coming into town. And Kirk McLean, the, the goalie, was going to be there at this event with the, with the with the cup. Next uh, next slide, please. Um, but uh, you know these things are are always on the fly. And as it turned out, um, next slide, the cup never arrived. It was a snowstorm, and it ended up in Edmonton. Never made it any further to the west. But anyway, they still wanted good images, and they still wanted lots of, of stuff to to go on. Now, just to, in any questions about this. You sell all your rights out when you go and do a, a job with somebody like the Canadian Press. Your images no longer belong to you. I'm allowed to show them here, but I'm not selling for any other reason. So, you know, you've done the job, you know, the role of film goes into them, so to speak, and that's it. You've, you've sold all your rights off with it. But it does get you credibility, and it, it, it makes you work hard on the fly. Next slide, please. Yeah. And that's the big thing I wanted. I really wanted the expertise so I could go off to bigger events mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it, like uh, you know suddenly you're over at a rally you've got to find an image that is going to be usable on the press next slide please and uh, you know you can't just sort of wander around the crowd and start you got to think what's the background going to be what's the you know impact going to be um, where can I get you know what kind of placements can I, I get into so all kind of fun um, in adventures but you got to push yourself a lot and you're not making a fortune on this. The daily rate's around 250 bucks for these press jobs. Um, next job, next, uh, sorry, slide, please. And, uh, you know, it's really, um, you're only gonna get jobs like this through uh, assignments or, or connections. Next, next slide, please. Um, and uh, it now is incredibly rare to get a direct press job. There's only Jonathan Hayward with Canadian Press, who's got a full-time job out here. Everybody else is sort of on spec, picking up, being thrown in, in and out of there. It's not a very glamorous place to be anymore. For me, it was fabulous because it um, it really you know got me positioned into difficult shooting situations on the fly, and I never was a threat to anybody else because the other photographer there's photographers there they already had their their you know their job, their assignment, their pay. And so I wasn't really conflicted with them. And, and they were actually, for press photographers, very welcoming. And I still am lucky enough to hang out with a fair number of them, which is, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, next uh, go. I guess they would call you a freelance photographer, would they, for this? Or? At best, yeah. yeah. Mostly they just call you, hey, get over there, out of our way. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I mean, I've, I've been, you know, shot at Olympics. It's a whole different story. I'll, I think I've got some images further along yeah. that I can, I can talk about that. But this led into to direct commercial jobs. And you got to keep your nose up in the air and keep looking around. But I ended up with really unusual 
uh, commercial jobs. I mean, you know, a helicopter sitting by a, you know, a lodge in the middle of nowhere with a red truck beer. Pretty cool. Yeah. Interesting enough, in the end, this never ran. It was never used because in the end, uh, Blackcomb Helicopter was not comfortable having their image associated with um, in, in, ingestion of alcohol. So, <laughs> you know, they decided not to. Didn't matter. I got paid. We, we went into a, a lodge. We got a fresh snowfall. All sorts of things worked out really well. Good images were had. But, um, you know, I've, I've been able to get to some interesting places by, you know, kind of getting into this connection, which is really fun. So you all have the same ability. Each person out there has something that has, is analogous to this. You are in a curling club. You, you, you work with model cars or you, you actually build hot rods. Um, you know how to get in the driver's seat for images. You have an inroad in something you know about and you've done lots of. So the real trick is to amplify this. And, you know, when you're trying to commercialize yourself at all, first of all, it's uh, friends, family, and your initial network that's right around you. And I really use that a lot. Um, and uh, first of all, you have to have the product and the skill. But if you want to kind of push yourself up a little bit, you got to get out there and keep doing this stuff. Whether you're getting paid for it or not doesn't matter. You have to get out and shoot shoot these, uh, these type of things. Next slide, Frank. Yeah, it kind of keeps you going for sure, you know, in between. Yep. Uh, yep. And, uh, yeah. So I was an orthopedic surgeon. I had my network. My network included a lot of physiotherapists, trainers, uh, coaches, that sort of thing. And so suddenly, you know, I'm next slide, please. I'm out there doing a, um, you know, a, a website for a physiotherapy group. And I found that um, that worked out really well. They, they loved the things that I was doing because I knew when I went in what I wanted to shoot. They knew what they needed. They knew it would appeal to the public. And so they were challenging jobs because you were in the middle of a busy physiotherapy unit. It's not like you go in at midnight. You go in when everything's happening. Next slide, please. And, uh, you know, make it look like this is a really good, um, you know, uh, outfit with modern, progressive kind of activity. And uh, I really, 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 you know, cut my teeth doing a fair number of these. So. Um, it's something I knew about. Again, I'm using my network. Um, I'm inviting myself into places to shoot. Granted, they're paying you a fair bit of money. And um, if anybody is doing websites, just a little practical thing here commercially, if you shoot images for a website and you charge, say, $400 an image, what you do is, of course, you license it for a three-year contract so they can use it for three years, at which point it comes down off the website or they renegotiate with you I usually pre-negotiate at 50% of the original cost. Good idea is not to call them until about a month before so they don't have time to go and get something new. They're sort of, oh my God, we better use what we have. So give them a tight a timeline if you're, if you're an aggressive business person. But those are the, say you, you got, say you did 10 images and they're licensed at 450 bucks a piece. So you got just under five grand with, with your working fee up there. You know, you, uh, and then suddenly, three years later, in your in your daytimer, it comes up that oh, time to renegotiate this one. You contact them; they use maybe eighty percent of the images again because they're still strong. And suddenly, a check comes in for fifty percent of what you got paid yeah. the first time around. So make sure you put you know time limited uh, usage on everything you do that's going to go on the web, and uh, have them pull it down or have them uh, you know pay you to use it again. So. Um, I've got some that are they've renegotiate or they've re reissued it three times. They're using the same images, so that's a pretty easy check that comes in down the road. So and that yeah. just takes you know commercial planning when you start. Yeah. And I didn't think of that. Somebody taught me to do that. Um, next slide, please. Everything comes from experience. You know, it, uh, we we talking to other photographers and and uh, you just learn over time how things work and what you should be doing. Yeah. So tonight, my objective, though, is not to try to um, make money for you, but try to make you a better photographer. So I'm sorry about sidelining a little bit, but it's interesting to sort of, you know, put put all that into place. Mm -hmm. Now, I do one heck of a lot of wandering. You know, my wife says, where are you going? I'm going to take some pictures. Where are you going? I don't know. What are you going to take? I don't know. I do a lot of wandering in life. And, and I, I just sort of kind of sit and watch and see what's going on around me. 
and I really encourage you all of all of you to do that. I'm a huge fan of of having. I have a little camera, a little Fuji X100V, and it's kind of with me all the time. And uh, some of the best images I have come from that because I'm there with a camera, and it's it's a real piece of equipment. But it's not so big that I'm carrying a 35 millimeter around all the time because after a while you find excuses not to carry that 35 millimeter with you. Uh, as I say, I'm 70. I'm getting older. Things are getting heavier. Um, even though they weigh less on the scales, they're getting heavier now. So <laughs> having something that you can have with you uh, is great. And I don't know that anybody listening to this would, would advocate using an iPhone for it. If you have it there, that's all you've got. But you know how frustrating it is when you blow that puppy up and there's just no pixels left at the edges and it just hasn't got what you need. I mean, if you're a photographer, carry a camera with you, one that you that you trust, you know how to use, that you can use with your eyes closed and it'll just burst into fruition with you. So I just encourage all of you to be enthusiastic about, you know, taking a picture. Today I took a portrait out skiing and, and somebody, I was positioning them over, you know, with mountains and behind and a tree, just people I'd seen that I, I knew. And, and uh, they said, do you have a camera with you? And it's just a little pouch, you know, that comes out, boom, up, shoot it and away you go. But having a real piece of equipment, you, you just can't, you just can't do better than that. Um, Frank, could you move on to the next thing? I can. Okay, I have, good. I have the capabilities. You have the capability. And yeah. this is a significant image for you, Frank, because oh. I saw Frank a week before this getting off the Ocean Light 2 up on uh, Gribble Island, off Gribble Island near Hartley Bay, off, uh, south of Prince Rupert. And uh, about three days after seeing you, we, we spent three days waiting in the in the woods for, a, um, for the spirit bear to come along. But eventually the spirit bear appeared um and uh so the point of this is really i've taken along a lot of major freelance projects so a project like this would be around five thousand dollars to you know to get up there and do the shooting and get back and and um, i don't know what you run trips now frank yeah. but as a as somebody as a consumer going up even doing it on the side it's around that amount of money but so far, knock on wood, I've always been able to be at least neutral. And sometimes, you know, images have become very profitable. This image, um, if you purchased it from me, it's a limited edition print and it goes for $1,500. Mm -hmm. So the profit margin on that after you print it and mailed it and sent it and put authentication and everything is around um, $1,100 realistically. Um, that's, uh, you know, after you take off business costs and everything, you take the cost of the trip and everything anyway, but by the time you've sold, um, 25 limited edition prints for $1,500, it becomes a viable option. So I've Absolutely. gotten to a position where, where I can move, you know, prints and it doesn't matter if you buy a, uh, you know, a 12 by uh, eight of this or a 40 by 30, it's the same cost. It's a piece of art. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my mm -hmm. clients. They don't have big wall space. They've moved into condominiums now. They want something smaller. So I'm quite aggressive at finding out exactly what they want. What substrate do you want it on? Do you want it framed? Do you want it? <clears throat> um, probably my least favorite is canvas, but it sells. Yeah. Uh, or do you want it on metal? Do you want it on acrylic? You know, it's. I, I make less money, say, doing an acrylic one. Oh, Paul disappeared. Okay, he went somewhere. I think his camera might have failed or something went dead, but here he comes. Okay, he's back in again. Yep. Did I get kicked out for being too long winded? No, I, I, I don't know I what happened hint. there, but yeah, yeah, you're still here. We're still here I waiting. <laughs> I can take a hint. Uh. Uh, okay, good. All right, back at it again. Enough of this uh, Kermode bear. Anyway, yeah. uh, so I've taken on major freelance projects. Like next image, if I could. Yeah. So the, these, all these are great projects to take on, but you better have a bit of an ob ob objective at the end of it because and they cost you cost you a bit of coin. Now, if you can afford to be on things like this, that's fabulous. But if you're close to the penny, they're hard things to justify. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next, next image, please. Yeah. So, on 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 one of those same projects. Um, I was, you know, I always have my editorial mind in, in my head and I was the last one flying out from the, from the vessel. Uh, and I was able to convince the pilot for 
a set cost to do some more loops around Prince Rupert. Well, this is just the same time they're trying to get the LNG natural gas pipeline extended all the way out there. So it's hot in the press. So I actually had current images to feed to the press, which was germane. And I mean, sometimes you get paid $40 for the front page of the Globe and Mail. That's, you know, kind of what you get paid. But big, if 12 bucks. Papers, <laughs> big bucks, but if 12 papers pick you up, then then the coin sort of, you know, works out. So I didn't make a whole lot of money on this, but I did pay for my plane ride to get all the images, which was about $600 of airtime, mm -hmm. just getting lots of images from the air of, of the port out at um, at, uh, Prince, at Prince Rupert. Next slide, please. Now, one thing I've always been a sucker for is theater. And I shot, next slide, please. I shot all sorts of theater when I was in Vancouver. Whenever there was anything going on, and it was all donated work for the first six years. Wow. And then suddenly I got a bit of a reputation with it and I was able to go out and charge pretty good coin to do um, theater work. Now, I, I have a very fine line. If if it's a, you know, a non-professional group and they're poor as sin, I'm happy to do it. I love shooting theater. I got a good feel for it. it worked out really well. And it really, it, you know, um, helped me a lot in lighting what kind of lenses to use, working in very low light, you know, getting actors looking really good and personified. And there's a, um, a magazine in Vancouver called Playbill, and I got six covers on it. Wow. So whether, whether I was or not, people thought that I knew how to shoot theater and do all these fancy sort of things. And I did, we did Sound of Music one year, and I got um, uh, Liesl in, in the Sound of Music and, and several others you know, in front of the lions in, in wow. winter, you know, with yeah, the, yeah. and so it became, it became Sound of Music Vancouver. And suddenly it's on the side of buses, you know, like great big billboards and things. It went kind of yeah. famous and viral. So there's lots of, you know, things you can walk forward with just if you sort of hunt around and look at it. Next that has slide, to be a please. cool thing, Paul, when you see your photo on a, on a bus going by. Yeah. I, I guess I get more of a thrill when my mom phones me and says, nice image, Paul. She's 95. Anyway. Oh, well, that, yeah, I mean, that would be too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was saying earlier that I hooked up with um, a photographer, Jillian Shatniff, who was 25 years in the business. She was kind of burned out. She's tired of running all this stuff. But I asked her, you know, would you come and help me with a few shoots and things? So she got juiced up again. And, and together we were sort of a 1.0 photography unit. Um, because I don't know the, anything about, you know, making people look slimmer, making them look beautiful, posing, um, uh, you know, working up the dollar amount and presentation, so bad at all that. And she was superb at it. And I was good at the technical side. I was pretty good about getting jobs and clients that could pay for it. And so between the two of us, it was it was a gas. I learned yeah. so much. On slide, please. And again, I encourage you if you have the ability to go shooting with other people especially if they're better than you or more experienced, jump onto it. And um, I found that, you know, we, we caught a little bit of a mark in, in, um, in Vancouver with all sorts of different groups. We, we took them on location whenever possible in the beautiful parts of Vancouver. Next slide. But uh, the lighting was just, again, lighting, 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 and lighting. Um, I just, I got so bored with, a, you know, a, a white seamless sort of image like this. Next slide. Uh, so we did everything we could to be in interesting locations. And um, I'm kind of proud of this image. Uh, it's a portrait. It's, a great it's in the Vancouver really, Art really Gallery. Nice. Yeah. And they have that. This It used to be the courthouse years ago. So they've got one maintained suite with it. But there's 12 lights in here to make this thing look decent. So I've got, I've got SB800s up the back. I've got strobes, you know, making the wood just perfect. There's five different uh, sets of lights on the... On the on each of the uh, people in the image, so that they're just, you know, really well lit. But they're like in groups of two, they're lit all the way across. So, this was a bit of a setup. I had to figure out how to get ten million dollars worth of insurance for a day. Um, you know, it was just it's kind Crazy, of fun putting it? projects yeah. Yeah. like this together. And again, I did it as, a, on a, as with a team. Like Jillian Shatner came along. I couldn't pose people like this. I'd have them all standing, stopping hockey pucks with their hands on the front or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. So work with people that know what the hell they're doing. Uh, next slide, please. Um, but again, I'm just trying to demonstrate. I did a bit of absolutely everything, and we did a lot of, 
you know, family portraiture. I had fun working in the collaboration with it. It really pushed me along uh, quite a bit. And I mean, how many people can sell huge pieces of art to people from shooting their backsides? The family was in love with this image. That's the one they, you know, eventually so uh, bought. So just working it in all sorts of different ways is an important thing. Next slide, please. But um, where I really feel comfortable and where I've kind of my mind has been all my life is is out in the wilderness. And so it doesn't matter if I'm on snow, uh, hiking, uh, if I'm camping somewhere or if I'm on the water. Um, that's where I'm really, really comfortable. Next slide. And so a lot of the images that people know me for are out in the, you know, in this in this situation. But again, it means knowing your um, OK, just just leave it there. OK. It, it means being can you go backwards or is that not uh, a possibility? I can, yeah, I can go back yeah you have amazing technology that's great hey yes <laughs> yeah so so the um the um sorry for asking this i haven't been on this platform before it's no, no, i shouldn't no say worries. it's running smoothly i'll get disconnected again but thanks frank for setting it up um so but again if you're out in a kayak and you're shooting you better have a good waterproof case right in front of you you can be accessible with uh, you better have a lens you know cold in your mind, you have to have that, you know, shot in your mind. Am I going to be at a 400 millimeter? You can't be changing lenses out on the water. You have to be able to click your box open, get your lens up, do your long shots if they're there. And I usually end up with a long lens on. If, so I, if I have a shot like this, I've got time to usually just switch to a wide E if I've got a more landscapey thing. So, um, you know, just knowing gear that's going to work out there is is important. Next. And uh, these these guys were transients, and they unfortunately gobbled up a porpoise in between them. But it was pretty dramatic. So an authentic image, and everybody out there has got to focus on making your own authentic image. It's not about you know the salon competition. It's not how much money you make for an image. It's not about the sales. It's about how you do. Now I had the privilege of winning a a bronze medal in the World Photographic Cup in 2018, and you sort of think, oh, competition's not. I can tell you, I, I've been able to sell a lot of product because I'm a bronze medalist in the World Photographic Cup. It was a huge, huge yeah. deal. And, uh, you know, that it's just it went over in Europe getting your awards and things. I mean, the media is there. You're, you're at the Olympics for the photographers is what's happening. It's It was really quite uh, amazing. And it's just an, an average image. You look at the image, you say, well, that's just kind of the backyard Canada. But what we shoot in Canada is very exotic to the rest of the world. And so it's important, next slide, it's important that you realize that what you have around you is, is to be documented, it's to be worked on, and it's to be uh, embraced. And what you know and what you know well and do a good job of imaging is so exciting for the rest of the, of the world. Uh, and you just can't ever forget that, that we have so much around us. You don't need to go to Myanmar to get, you know, well, you can't go now, but anyway, you can't, you don't need to go to places to get amazing images of monks with, you know, wrinkly hair. We got that right around Canada everywhere. In Richmond. So, we have them out in Richmond. You got them out in Richmond. You yeah, really do. So. so I always think, you know, that the authentic image, which is what I want you to sort of think about tonight, it's about you. It's about you as a photographic artist. And you don't need to be in some magic place to great get great images. This image is very authentic for me because I've been in the mountains, you know, since the 60s. I'm comfortable out mountaineering and ski touring. I love being out there. I love looking at lines. I love looking at texture. I think more about processing an image when I'm taking it really about texture, about tone, about contrast. I don't think about things I can do in Photoshop because I'm the worst Photoshop guy you've ever met. But it's this to me is an authentic image. I've captured an individual at the height of their skill and activity in a beautiful mountain environment and they're right in my freaking face. That, that's mm. something I just love to do. And each of you has your own, next image please, has yeah. your own style with that. So you have to think, what are you gonna do to hand down as a legacy for your great grandchildren or anybody that knows you? What will they see imprinted as your legacy? And I really think that it's worthwhile, um, you know, when you're sort of contemplatively trying to stay awake through this talk or at some point, just jot down or think to yourself, what is my real essence? What is my photographic legacy? If I could take four images and show them to the future world, what would they be? You know, what would Wayne Wilton's be, uh, images be? 
Um, are you still downhill skiing? Yes, I am. I'm still downhill skiing. Um, mostly ski touring. This year I've skied 50 days cross country and wow. uh, two days yeah, two days on the mountain. I live in Whistler. I, I choose not to ski at Whistler this year because I'm scared out of my wits about getting COVID. I've had cancers and immune system down, all that sort of thing. So and I had I'm just that too question scared. too uh, from Wayne had asked me earlier on about the COVID, how it's, how it's affecting Whistler. Uh, because you are right on the front lines there. Yeah. How is it affecting Whistler? Well, um, I'm not allowed to swear on these things, but <laughs> we freaking have, we got Quebec, we got Ontario, we got Washington state. We got, we got everybody in Whistler right now. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's significantly underreported because the mantra really, if you're under 30 years of age, you don't show up for a swab because if you test positive, you shut your whole fam household down. They can't go skiing. They can't work. Yeah. So we really don't know what the instance is. I'm selling T-shirts up here, and it says says on it, um, uh, "Take home a special souvenir from from Whistler," and <laughs> with it you get a, you get a two week guaranteed holiday that you have to pay for your isolation time. It's it's, oh, wow. it's, it's really you know the, the people that live up here have been really careful. Uh, you know the the places that we go to buy our groceries are good but the world is here and the world is out cruising around smoking yeah. doobies in the yeah. middle yeah. of whistler and all this i don't know what what vale has up their backside that's that's got the handshake with the government but mm. it's just incredible that it's still operating i mean mm. you shut down the pne sort of thing i mean how is it that you can wander around Whistler? They say right. it's safe, but yeah. that's a long rant. To it. yeah. It's not as, and we've been hiding. That's why I go cross country skiing because you arrive in the parking lot, no mask. You go by people at a distance. Uh, you're outdoors, and so um, yeah, we have we have the world has congregated at Whistler this this winter. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was way off topic, uh, but it's oh, a good yeah. question anyway. Interesting. So next Im please. next image. So this uh, this image is the one that won me a bronze medal at the World Photographic Cup, and wow. I think almost everybody that sees it go up would say, "Well, that's just a mountain shot in Whistler," which it is. But it was exotic enough, and it was you know uh, uh, acceptable enough to the to the judges. And these are people from the Philippines and South America and Australia, um, you know, that really uh, thought it was strong enough to keep moving forward. Um, and snow for, that's Wayne Wil Wilton just yeah, saying hello. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, an image like this is really, uh, this is me, you know, this is me out, out in the, in where I love to be, but I'm, I just didn't sort of pick the camera up and take the image. Uh, I knew that day that I had a new snowfall. So I had untracked snow. I had uh, the lines I wanted to see. And I was lucky enough early afternoon to have these clouds here to, to really increase the contrast. In the winter, the the, the, the uh, sun is really low, so you've got your your friend, the contrast low sun to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I kind of know my snow shapes, and this is not with a lot of fancy gear. I have to carry all my gear with me, and so this is you know a, I think it's a D eight hundred, no, it's sorry a D six ten actually. Next image, please. Yeah. It's a you know it's not a fancy piece of gear, and it's a kit lens twenty four to one twenty, but you got to be able to. Um, you know, have your gear with you, have it accessible, you know, have, have it ready, ready to go with it. And so I really, you know, the final image on this was pretty cool. I've not only done well with it, but it sells very well, you know, a limited edition. So that, that's nice too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, it's the process of the experience that just is overwhelming for me. And I, I just can't tell you how wonderful it is to be out in environments like this. I look back at a lot of my images and they've, a lot of them have been when I've been tired or cold or wet or just really pushing myself physically. And somehow that helps to enhance the, I guess, the, the dopamine response and the trance that you get in photographically. But a lot of other things are excluded. It's not like standing behind a freeway in Burnaby with the traffic going by. Huh. You're just really focused on what you want to really capture and, yeah. and retain yeah. and yeah. I can remember this moment regardless of the image and I probably will the rest of my life so next were you image, a part please. of that group uh, Paul uh, that there's down there yes or? Yes. Yeah. yes okay and so I know the guide well enough that he knows that I'm hanging back to take a picture and that I'll catch up next slide okay. please. so uh, yeah so I I really I knew my distance I knew where I wanted the the, the uh, you know the, the um, skiers to be 
here's another approach another day um you know same thing i'm i'm hanging back in order to anticipate where the image is going to be and uh, you know where and and once you get that human element in it it really adds for me so much uh, to an image um i'm a i like doing landscape but i always prefer having some form of of human or animal element within it some form of protoplasm turning over in the image just yeah. for me adds a lot more and and the reason that i'm there i've also been given the blessing to be there if there's animals out there you're in their home uh, next image please and plus it gives so, you the scale scale also yes scale absolutely so uh you know this i must have been a dope me when i read wrote this but i embrace the focus surrounding the creation of the image it transports me into my next capture and i'm really here planning and thinking where is the next you know stop going to be where's the next transition where's the sun going to be next image please and so i kind of know where the guides are going to probably stop where the safe spot is so in my mind i've got the rocks and the shape i know where i want to position myself to get a, an image like this which is in many ways signatory you know of humans preparing to take off down the down the hill uh next slide please um and it's it's amazing when you um you know stop and and uh sorry next slide can come yep. up too yeah oh. and you you, you kind of that's perfect you look around you feel what's going on around you it's more than just thirds and light and um an image like this though i would you know take instinctively i want to star the sun I've got a, a fairly mediocre lens out with me, a 24 to 120. But I know if I uh, focus on the northern, or at least I, I meter off the northern sky, something I learned in the in the 60s, that if I come back, then I will have a, a, a star and a well-exposed image all in one. So if I'm trying to do a sun star against the sun, I crank the thing up to whatever the top is, F16 or F22, whatever it is then get my metering off the off the northern sky, keep it there, come down and take the image, and this is the image you will get. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of 1960s mentality, but it still works with the digital. Uh, oh, here I'm trying to advance the slide. Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it yet. Hey, good try. That's my job. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so if you really want to be a great photographer, and not just a really good one. You want to be a great photographer. All you have to do is go out and be yourself. Next slide, please. Um, you know, you you really you've really got it all within in yourself, and uh, you need to let others see you naked. You have to let them into your very soul. What makes you tick? Be proud of it, and you're gonna in the uh, you're gonna express a lot of sadness. You're gonna have happiness. You have to really expose your values doesn't mean you have to yak to everybody about what you do, but the images that you present have to really have that in their makeup. Next slide, please. And um, you're going to show all your life experience through your images. So I really ask you to focus on being able to use that to your advantage. Just like Wayne out there, all those years in enforcement, he's got an experience none of us mm -hmm. will really understand or you know he would know immediately where to stand at an activity or an event from his experience and his yeah, knowledge base yeah. of humanity and so each of you has that make sure you use that next slide please to your total advantage you've really i, I can't implore you enough to sort of really really you know focus on on that kind of activity um this is again this is an authentic image of mine uh, I just know it's authentic. It's got the humanity in it. It's got the texture. It's got mountain. It also shows that the effort required to make your way up a mountain yes, in order yes. to, you know, ski and use it. It's, wow. it's got, yeah. you know, all that sort of built into it. And also it took my my smarts to figure out, oh, I got an image and I, I got an image. I know I have an image here. And when we go across slopes, usually you go out about 10 meters apart mm -hmm. just for safety. So if you do avalanche, then you have one or two people in the avalanche, not the whole gang. Yeah. And so just where I stopped, I had the, the crowd behind me and I'd worked really hard to get to this position, uh, you know, above the rest of the, you're shooting on the fly. These aren't set up. And so uh, I said, guide wants us to hold on for about 60 or 80 meters here. Just hold on for a while. 
knowing I didn't want to go forward and get too close to him because I couldn't get the image. So <laughs> as soon as I got my, and I took one picture and moved on, I said, no, he says 10 meters is okay. So off we went at the usual spacing with it. But anyway, next step, the next mm -hmm. slide. Um, so yeah, so, you know, I'm always thinking what's my next step upwards in, in images and where can I get my, my, my next, uh, you know, click that's going to work for me. Next image, please. Yes. And, uh, I, I really, I really shoot a lot of things. I mean, you know, you see a bit of architecture here. Um, uh, I just, just as a matter of, of publicity for anybody, these, this is the two sides of a card that I would send out. And I, instead of business cards or thank yous or whatever, I usually send out photographic cards with something that's done well or a, an image that, that, that I like a lot. And it's amazing how five years later you go back to that office and your card is still hanging around. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, printing a good quality image, this is on Moab 300, really thick paper, prints both sides. I just do it on my home printer. Um, I've tried doing runs of things, but it feels better if I do the, if it's authentic, if it's mm -hmm. my image that That's I right. send out, yeah. I sign them. People have them forever. It's, it's, it's incredible. You couldn't get a better bit of publicity if you're looking to be commercial. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So I strongly encourage people to sort of look at that. And uh, next slide. Um, so this, this I would consider a really authentic image. And I won't run through everything, but I, when I was an orthopedic surgeon, people at this train trestle that went over used to get nailed and injure themselves by the train all the time. So we were kind of lobbying to get an overpass done. So I was part of the lobbying for the overpass. I was there when it was being built. I go over with my bicycle. I sort of physically knew it. And as it was getting close to completion, I thought, well, this would be a great thing to take an image of. So I had the, the thought of the, you know, the twilight hour. I knew the image I wanted to take. And I got over there before graffiti got all over the thing. So I didn't have to retouch it afterwards. But it hangs in, in uh, you know, in the Burnaby City Hall. It's, uh, it was the first image of its type. It's been duplicated many times. But, you know, I kind of had the first one out there. And it, it did quite well. Um, next, please. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm not just a mountain guy. I mean, I shoot architecture. I shoot a bit of freaking everything, it seems. Mm. And, uh, and uh now, if you're trying to, you know, really expand yourself a little bit and you want to push yourself and be responsible for results, I can't think of anything better than street photography. So uh, if you want to make some authentic images, go out and, and, and challenge yourself. Next slide, please. To, to, to get into some street photography. It doesn't need to be on the street, but just human activity. And uh, you'll know when you see it. You'll know when you've got moments to be captured. I mean, you couldn't set this up. Um, you know, for love and her money. Next image, please. Um, but um, street photography is is interesting because I, I hate being out in street photography. That's okay, just leave it. I'm the least comfortable when I'm out doing street photography. But I, I've got to think to, for anybody that's consuming or looking at my image. Um, are you in this image? Next next image, please. Uh, are you in this image? Have I have I walked you into it? And, uh, you know, what's it make you feel like? Do you feel like, um, you know, are you uncomfortable about it? What's he, hell's he doing? Is he, you know, a pervert? And you can, yeah, just leave her there. That's good. Are you a pervert in the washroom or not? Um, in fact, I was taking a picture of a kid with a $300 Air Jordans and fancy pants, <laughs> so 17 years of age. The, uh, the tile in the bathroom is, um, you know, from the 1950s, you'll never see that again. They don't allow that sort of thing. So I've authenticated an era. I got a kid who's 17, who's at the PNE walking around with really, I mean, that's like wearing an expensive suit for old guys, I guess, you know, yeah. it's just uh, very, it's very, you know, idiosyncratic, but it kind of puts you in the moment. So um, if you want to make more interesting pictures, become a next, next slide, please just go and become a more interesting person. And, uh, Ironically, this black and white was, that's the quote by Jay Maisel. And uh, Jay's getting on there. He's in his mid eighties now, I guess. But I went to a couple of courses. I stop at this one and don't advance yeah. on this one. I'm gonna talk about it for a while. But I, anytime somebody came to Vancouver that I thought was a really good photographer and could teach me stuff, I was there with in spades, you know, and I would put the money down to physically be with these people, take their courses, get abused by them, get taught by them, you know, get enhanced by them. So, you know, there are good photographers that still come out and teach. 
um, and and I would suggest very strongly hooking up to it. We have an absolute gem in Canada is um, Steve Simon. Now Steve Simon's from Montreal originally. He cut his teeth in journalism in in Edmonton, but then moved to to New York. He's published quite a number of photographic books. He's a superb teacher, and he's now seconded in Delta with his outlaws. Um, wow. he, uh, so he's actually in town right now, and he runs workshops uh, both online, which he's done through COVID, and also he does in-person ones. I think he's going to try to run a street photography one this summer in, mm -hmm. in Vancouver again. I can't think of a per-moment activity that's of higher value than being with somebody of the quality of Steve Simon. And if you do screenshots, take a screenshot of this. He's got an updated book now, but his book, The Passionate Photographer, is a book that whenever I get a little bit blocked and I need some inspiration, I go back and I read yeah. his his book, The Passionate Photographer. But he just has it, you know, I think most people on this on this tonight are fairly mature in their photography. He speaks to you and he's got something for absolutely everybody. And um, the words that he says and has taught me, I just still retain, like he's always said, Paul, trust your edit. So I go to a rodeo and I shoot, you know, 10,000 images over three days. You better trust your edit because you're not going back again. You better yeah. be able to throw yeah. those things as fast as you can. So anyway, if you could go and look at taking a second only to, I think, um, uh, you know, Frank Polly going on a, on an excursion with him. Absolutely. But, yeah. That, that would be, you know, this would be a second, second activity to look at, but um, so he's running online courses and if you can get into one of them, he's got one right now, which is essentially how to publish a book, how to, how to take your work and put it and you say, oh, well, I could probably do that myself. You probably could, but you won't do it usually. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of forces you at the end of your eight weeks or whatever, you got a book, you know, you put a book together with him and five other people in the class. So very practical, just, and he's right around the corner and he's physically with us in, in Vancouver right now. Uh, next image. Any questions on that? I mean, I'm not trying to advertise for somebody in any way whatsoever, but I'm just trying to think what gives you the best you know, bang for your buck at this stage well, right now. I think now you're right, you know, Paul, it, and, and a lot of us should uh, and be taking courses from uh, uh, photographers and just learning something a little different and right. and, and seeing how they, they go about their daily uh, photography and, and uh, because we can always learn something new. And yeah, yep. it's worth every penny to go and, and uh, take a course. I've done that, uh, taking courses from other photographers and, and uh, uh, there's nothing wrong in doing that, you know, and, and uh, I, I encourage it and you encourage taking courses and yep. you yourself uh, and you're still going out and learning, you know, like, I mean, this is a, oh, a hobby that yep. uh, and a profession that you, you never stop learning. So. Yep. Yep. And someday if I keep working, I'm going to take a good image. I'm working at it. I just <laughs> yeah. you know, keep yeah. we, we do. I, I, yeah. often, I often think if you really want to improve your photography and say you do a lot of sports or you do a lot of wildlife, go take a take a course in how to shoot newborns or fine art or food photography. I, I do all these bizarre things. People say, why are you going and taking a course in food photography? Yeah. I learn all sorts of stuff from, mm -hmm. from pushing myself into an area I don't know about, don't really know, or jewelry. I went to a yeah. jewelry one. Boy, oh yeah. boy, I can light things with mirrors. I could you know, light a room up with reflected mirrors after the end of it, but it may be thinking about again, how to, you know, how to kind of uh, undertake more interesting things. So um, now I'll, I'll move through this fairly quickly. We're at an hour now, Frank, should I call it off here? or, or hey, another 10 It's minutes? up to you. I We have all the time in the world. If you do, we're on my, my projection, we're about halfway through your slides. So you can okay. call it whenever you like, you know, it, it's, right. just, it's up to you. You're yep. the, you're the guy doing all the talking. We're all just listening and taking this all in. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that it's actually helping and not just more dribble coming out here. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, sorry. Okay. So connection. Um, I, I try really hard in my photography to always connect with the, the people that I'm making images of. And, um, I, I had the privilege of being at, you know, a fair number of, okay, do you ask people on the street for permission to photograph them? Never, never. Um, that's the whole thing about uh, street photography. If somebody sees me taking an image and they're uncomfortable with it, I'll, I don't dick around. I'll delete it right away, but I'll shoot and move. And the legality of it, if you take a, 
if you're in a, in a public space or you're shooting from private land onto a public space, legally the anticipation of privacy will not hold up. You can, you know, you, th those two lovers uh, kissing that I you showed a picture of before. I could publish that on the front page of the Vancouver Sun. They may not like it. His his wife may not like it. But you know, it's um, it's legal to have it out there, and it's with, been held up in the courts in, in Canada. And I've been through a few of these, so no, I don't ask permission. If I wanted to make a more formal portrait, like I wanted to really work with them, of course, I would go and, and ask permission. And and uh, I, I'm not much of one for the downtown east side. I just, it doesn't feel like I've got a lot to add by making images down there. Mm -hmm. So usually I have people that are kind of engaged in activity or they're riding by it on bicycles or they're getting high on weed or they're, you know, I am... Um, uh, I just don't let myself wander into those situations that are difficult. But if ever it doesn't feel right to take a picture, I don't take it. When I'm shooting rodeo and there's an injured athlete, the camera goes down. If I'm at a track event and, a, you know, this 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 uh, picture that's up right now, it's at the Paralympics. And, and he had a cramp in the middle of his 400 meters. He was the flag bearer for Brazil. It was a horrible time for him with it. Um, but, you know the gentleman loved this image and he asked for a copy of it you know it was um there's some things you just kind of uh yeah. you know with it's a human with emotion it. you know that you yes. have in there that's what you've captured there uh in in competition you know it, uh, so next next yeah. image please yeah. so um you know how do you how do you how are you going to connect the viewer to an event and 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 here you are you're with um literally i'm with three thousand other photographers when i took this picture up in the in the media gallery and i've been there for eight hours so i got a reasonable position in the center is the blade runner is uh, pistorius um uh, you know the the blade runner who's yeah, more yeah. famous for his girlfriend activity than his running next slide please but you've got to somehow you know um make a connection here i've got my four uh, runners coming down oh. do i focus on that's okay leave yeah. it Pistor no go ahead okay. do i focus on pistorius or do i go for the winner and it was clear that the winner so here's here's Pistorius coming across in second position. You know, certainly I got lots of images. I knew him from the Olympics and from other activities before. Next image, please. But the um, the story that everybody wanted to hear because it was in England uh, is the winner is is Johnny who 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 won the hundred meters and, and took Pistorius down. So it was um, it's kind of a, you know a matter of selectivity and, and you know yourself from really researching this who's in the who's in the event where are you going to be where are you going to set up next slide please but all of us you know um have the ability to put ourselves into the story and i whenever i can i try to be uh looking through the eyes of the athlete and and here up at whistler a couple of years ago ski jumping just that feeling of the of these gentlemen soaring off the big jump off into into space I mean, that's kind of what they see yeah. that's what they're looking at when the, when they take off next image the um I, I had a prize winner here from this one but it it to me it's not nearly as interesting it, it's a well done pan you know and it, it it did well in competition sold well on the uh editorial on web but the one that sort of puts you in the place at next image please of an athlete or if you're able to to walk into their environment i think it's important but don't get confused this is a Skell's an athlete, and that's the top of her head, actually. She's looking down, but they paint the top of their heads because that's how the image comes up. But when the weather gets gnarly and it's puking, it's a good time to stay out to get great images, whether you're covering rugby, whether you're in downtown Vancouver shooting when the umbrellas come out. It's all a great thing to stay with. Next image, please. And uh, anytime you can get right in that location, it, it's a big, big thing for me. This is Paul Wright. Uh, they wanted an image of cross-country skiing for Whistler. Um, I, I, they didn't have what they wanted. So I thought, well, let's see if I can get one that's sort of right in the track of the moment of what's going on. So I set my camera for a delay of 10 seconds, banged up, and then it shot 12 images, you know, brrr, as I skied over it. And after about three passes, you got an image that kind of worked. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, there's, you know, there's lots of stuff you can kind of, you. and everyone in, in this on this call tonight has the strength of knowing the emotion um what protective oh on the camera none i just skied over it it wasn't it wasn't snowy that day 
and I just put this the the um I have a little teeny um tripod that I take everywhere with me little um uh, you know um gear do you use for gear okay I'll, after I finish this slide I'll talk about it but um I um I just put it in the track between me and skied over it I pre-focused so that it wouldn't be you know way the heck down probably mm. you can see from the sun start would have been already up at f16 or something and then you know banged away with it it's not a very technically difficult image but just you know sort of thinking about where you're going to put things like that um i was just asked but what gear do i use i use a few gx100 uh v for carrying around with me on my and it's actually filming me right now it's a very versatile little camera and i use um uh, the rest of my gear is nikon and i only use it because that's what my aunt um, showed me when i started and she gave me some lenses so you kind of build up your gear in it all the systems are so good now. So I don't know whether I buy Canon, Sony, or Nikon right now. Um, but I, when I was shooting uh, for like Canadian press or going to the Olympics and stuff, you needed quite a few bodies. So I've got a D4S that I shoot with for you know kind of press stuff. I have a D850, which is my main camera, just because it's a full sensor with lots of pixels on it. And then I have a pretty good array of, of glass um, from 14 millimeter up to 500. Um, but very often I'm out there with, a, say, a D850 and a 24 to 120, uh, you know, that I'm carrying with me. So, you know, my, my gear is fairly, you know, when I say it, it's fairly svelte. When I look in the box here, I got I got all kinds of, of gear. Um, but there's lots of really good lenses. And I've looked at all the new Nikon gear, the, the Z7 II, and I took the lenses and compared it to my D850, my present lenses. I couldn't find enough of a difference to jump into it yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, I probably will. And I don't know to stay with Nikon or go to the Sony system. That's a work in progress right now. So I don't have a definitive magic answer for you. You're, you're putting the time and money into a course get you a lot more than a new camera or a new lens. Well, like, so, like you were saying too, Paul, is, is like if someone getting into a photography now, every brand is exceptional i mean they all yeah. make great images uh they're all wonderful products so i don't think it really matters which one a person would choose it's what's kind of comfortable in your hand i that's that's what i for me it comes down to what's yes. comfortable in my hand what and i always if i am working with photographers or have a class we spend a lot of time with the lights out you know learning how to use your camera when i go night shooting and people can't find the that the you know the the replay button or it can't do plus you're hooped you got to know your gear cold you got to be able to just walk around that mm. thing with your eyes closed it's got to be so i mean if i were the, the gear is so good right now and the last generation gear was so good that the best bargain right now if you're going is to buy really good quality gear a generation old yeah, yeah. you know like if in your nikon it's pretty hard to touch a, a, a you know top a d850 um, and people say, well, it's not mirrorless. Well, look at the end image. And, uh, you know, I could afford and, and would buy new gear if I could get better images mm -hmm. and could shoot better with it. But um, I'm not jumping quite yet. Yeah. Uh, quite I honest. know my so friend Mike, he's got a, a ton of glass that that's old glass, but it's all basically new. Same thing with cameras, old cameras that are just like uh, pristine conditions. And, and uh uh, the, and they make it wonderful images, you know. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think the yeah. old glass is even better than the new stuff. And new stuff, they tend to well, put too much film on it, you know, like uh, yeah. layers of stuff. So, I, I wouldn't agree with that fully. I, I've taken the new Z7 II system and put the standard 14 to 30 f4 on it, and it is a remarkably sharp piece of glass, edge to edge. Like I, the old glass, it can't touch it for the edge vignetting gone so i think that and i can only speak to the nikon system um and i don't work for them yeah. um is is that um you know that that it's just remarkable um the sony lenses too uh in the wider ones they've got some issues with their longer glass uh but it'll it'll come up to speed so mm -hmm. anyway so i might move through this fairly quickly just yeah. uh because people will be getting tired but yeah. uh, you can go next slide yeah. just just saying that um it's really important to be there to, to shoot, you know, real human emotion. This was a big event, the uh, the Queen of the Peak, and there were several surfers that went on to be selected for the different national, international teams. Um, 
everybody was over at the winter circle, but I just knew there was a moment of joy coming in, in from the surf when the, the ladies got together to celebrate. Next image, please. Yeah, no, that's, that's a cool so, shot. I just, I just love moments of joy, and it's a matter of keeping your eyes open and not talking to your buddies while that's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's almost easy in athletic competition because there's either despair or incredible elation. Next slide. And it's not just the human species that has this. You know, there's a good hip check, check uh, fist pump in, in everything <laughs> that you do. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, just, just keep going. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the the uh, one thing about about photography is you need to have some pretty good endurance because i mean if you go and cover a triathlon or something it's a 16 hour day and you're in 40 locations and you're as tired as the people that finish quite often but but um be prepared to get out there and really go at it for quite a while to to get great images um i always i always think that the photography is very people say oh you're in a totally different thing now i think it's the same as being an orthopedic surgeon you got the technical side to work with you have to work with people and uh, you have to figure stuff out well in advance. You have to, you know, be able to, to uh, figure out that things are going to work out. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I think one of the biggest qualities you can have is being bombastically confident. You got to know you're going to get that image. Just, just go back one if you could. Oh, yep. So, so if you're yep. going to send a, an athlete up a hill to come down to try to get a, you know, a back splatter against sun kind of image, you better make sure everything's set up because if you don't get it, they're not going up again to take another picture. <laughs> you know, you got one go at it. Next image, please. So this this goes without saying that you have to be really, really comfortable with your equipment. And it doesn't matter if you got a, a Fuji, a Sony, a Nikon, a, a Canon, whatever you have, you just got to know it cold. And I really think one of the best things you can do, go shoot at night with your gear so you can work your way around it. It has to be absolutely second nature. There can't be any complicating things or, or you're not going to get very far with it. Next slide, please. Oh. I also um, think that um, uh, working on a team is really, really exciting. So whenever possible, I put projects together with teamwork because you'll learn so much from one another to get to the end point with it. If you're a total, you know, uh, solo kind of person, well, that's fine. But you just can't beat getting onto it. I think just in the interest of time, Frank, I'm going to get you to advance. Sure. Again. Yeah. I'll keep I'll it. Talk. You want me to keep it going? No, I'll just I'll, I'll I'll just say advance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, advance. Advance again. Now you also do night photography too, so just for the uh, viewers out there yeah. that, uh, not aware. So, yeah, I go back one. That's a cool kinda, shot here. I just uh, seen the people go, on there. Back one. Go back one. Go back one though. Okay. I I do I do a lot of night photography because COVID lent itself to it. So around Whistler, you know, there weren't people out. You know, you were on yeah. your own out there. It was great. Yeah. But I I really I got into sort of an equatorial tracker and um, spent a lot of time learning from other astrophotographers who were generous. One of the groups I'm, I'm really uh, heavily involved with is the Professional Photographers of Canada. And the PPOC, I just get so much, so much knowledge base from. Like, what do I know about night photography? Well, enough, but not, not nearly enough. So I call up my friends in the PPOC who do it. And generously, I got online courses one-on-one -on -one with them just to sort of tit-for-tat yeah. exchange of information. So, again, it helped. So I had a... a, a um, a magazine that wanted an image under moonlight of a group. And of course, I just happened to have one because there's the moon and behind there's some of my old farts at one of the groups that we had. We were going for a, um, uh, okay, I'll get to that, Karen, about rain covers. Um, the uh, So, you know, this is shot with a strobe, but it's still got moonlight coming towards you. So it's a matter of knowing your, your, your uh, strobes you take out perfectly. And yeah, I've got everything rehearsed in my head, you know, what F8, at 12 feet or you know or 20 steps or whatever is going to give me an f8 at, at iso 64 and then i just adjust the background to whatever it is so knowing your lighting is just so important mm -hmm. karen asked uh, what do i use for rain covers um i don't know the right answer to that i've got a number i've used over the years my most bomber proof ones are the think tank ones but that's only because i find them 
quite um, uh, supple still in cold temperatures. I'm out in freezing rain or snow quite a bit. So yeah. I just happen to use think tank ones and I've, I've only replaced one ever. They seem to last a long time, but Aquatech makes very good ones too. Um, and maybe Frank, you have another one for I've, rain. I covers. have the think tank ones too. They, they seem to be about the, the ones that everybody uses and they do last very well. So, yeah. And, 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 in uh, and also in the, you can pop to the next image, Frank. Okay. The think tank ones also, um, I find them the easiest to get in and work your controls. The other ones are, yeah. are hard to find your way in. So at least with my Nikon setup, I can get into it and, and run it quite well. And I, I've had a lot of 14 hour days in pelting rain and knock on wood, never had a, a moisture issue. Um, but um, I, I never hesitate to carry an umbrella. I've got a, like a golf tube on my, on my chest strap of my backpack and I put an umbrella in it. If you're not blocking other photographers, if you're in a group setting, there's no way to lose friends than have an umbrella, but, um, you know, or if it's windy. Um, anyway, but so the, the short answer would be, I've been a fan of Think Tank. Um, I, I don't know where you live, but if you wander down into, uh, say, Bow Photo, they have a pretty good assortment of different rain covers you can try on your actual equipment and see what works. Not advertising for Bow, but around town, you know, people yeah. that carry professional equipment, it's it's important. Everybody has their own favorite camera shop. I just like the one that has the right gear. Um, yeah, so just taking a picture of the helicopter on the way into a drop. Next uh, next image, please. Um, so I'm kind of always on the move getting, you know, images for, for different activities. This magazine wanted, it's July and they wanted a full spread. Um, you know, of images for this particular uh, backcountry lodge. I happen to have them just because I paid attention, gotten some good images. But this is again about knowing light and how to time yourself. Um, you know, this is early in the morning, the first light's just coming up over the edge. So you gotta drop your athlete right at the right second. So when they, they throw up their spray, you know, they're gonna catch the light in the spray, but they'll still be in the, in the shadow and the darkness. And that's just a matter of, you know, figuring that out. Next image, please. Um, but if you're going to these places, you got to shoot, you know, real estate too. You got to shoot interiors and, um, you can blast through the next two pretty quickly. Okay. Show the envir environment in different sort of settings, know how to work your night lights, um, how much flash to put out for it. Um, and, and then next image and then making small spaces look big, <laughs> you know, so you, you know, I, I've done a lot of architectural photography workshops and, and, and sold a fair bit of architectural work. So having a little bit of a, an ability in that is, is important. So as you can see, if somebody said, what kind of photographer are you? I'm a photographer. I do a little bit of everything. Next image, please. And uh, helicopter company wanted an image. Anyway, next image, please. Um, so poster images, you know, you, it, 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 you know, we kind of walk around Vancouver and when somebody says, do you have any images of, of uh, typical things in Vancouver? Most people are going to say no. Yeah. I mean, if you are interested in actually being out there on a commercial basis, you better have Vancouver documented in nice light. When the 2010 Olympics came, I can't tell you how hard it was to assemble enough images for, for, uh, for you know, the advertisements about the Olympics in Vancouver. People were destitute. They just didn't have images of their backyard sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one's run in magazines, it's run on billboards, it's run, you know, all over the place, but it's just a kind of setup. Next image, please. And if it's really boring in the middle of the day, you better kind of know what to do. Um, so, you know, having a neutral density filter out there and a small tripod to smear some skies, get you out of a, a lot of trouble sometimes. Next image. So this is, this is me, me, myself climbing up. Another person took the image. And everything I have is on my chest, so I can get to it in seconds. It's just a, a low pro, you know, very inexpensive um, pack that I've had probably since the 80s. Um, it's got, I like it because it's got a big zipper on it. I can get to it real quickly. So I can get my gear out and it's in and out very, very, you can't hold groups up when you're doing stuff like this, but everything I have is on my stomach and I'm very used to skiing with a camera up in front of me. Next slide, please. Well, you guys really get up the mountains. We do, yeah. Keep oh, going. Wow. Keep going. 
sometimes you get a lift, not very often. Keep going, keep going. You better be able to to uh, to uh, shoot the the chef, make her look pretty and good. She's actually a very experienced mountain climber. You got to know food photography. Shoot. Next one. Um, commercial stuff. This one I sold did really well on, and it was in the middle of a ski day. This one, the guy's got three. The the, the company that bought it. It had Smith goggles, and it had black diamond, and it had outdoor research wow. pack. Yeah. Keep go, keep going. I don't want it, this to go on all night. Keep going. Sold an airbag once too, which is interesting. Next shot. Yeah. <laughs> that one, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Inflated airbag. Next. Um, and and you know, thinking about what you're shooting, they wanted a banner for the top of a magazine spread, so horizontals. Uh, Next image, and we'll stop at it for a second. So this is a very famous athlete named Greg Hill. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always doing portraits of people. I, if I got my, you know, 120 lens on, 24 to 120, I do portraits all the time with them when I'm, at, you know, at rest between stuff. And this image ran 14 national papers. It was on CBC extensively. This guy ended up being a hero in, in, in Nepal at an avalanche um, on K2. They had a... A, a very significant avalanche and he and some of his crew went and saved probably three people dug up about 20 bodies unfortunately but he became a bit of a rock star around the world and sort of you know this image was in canadian press archives greg hill ski touring guide revelstoke boom suddenly it comes up and it's all over the the media so it was um it's interesting where these things will show up with it mm -hmm. yeah next next um we're getting towards the end here for yeah. sure. Um, so I think, yeah, next slide. It's got it. Yeah. So this is a, you know, using your technical skills and everything that's in your, in your backpack of, of knowledge base. Um, so we're up there at midnight It's 28 below zero. It's freaking cold. Just the athlete and myself, but I knew the moonrise was going to come up over this hill. I'd scouted it out. Photo pills gave me the idea where it was going to be. And it's actually the camera's on a tripod. It's a 30 second exposure. So I had the athlete drop down and time his launch off the edge of this at 28 seconds into the exposure, at which point I flashed wow. my flash, which is, a, I had a, I think I actually had a, an alien B in those days with a back with a battery, um, but it's columnated, just hits him. And uh, by him being up in the sky, I didn't get photo drag. I didn't get shutter drag. Uh, if it was on the snow, you'd see him blurring out. Um, but uh, this image went all over the place. A clothing company, Arcteryx, bought it, but they never used it because they didn't produce that color of, of uh, clothing the next year. They decided against it. So they bought it, and I got paid, but they didn't use it. But it ended up on you know, Ski Magazine and running in all sorts of places. But uh, it's sort of a you know an interesting kind of image to have stars and moon and, and skier and everything in it. Uh, so just losing, using all the skills, and each of you has your own little bag of skills that you bring with you. Um, next image, please. So, you know, make sure you use them. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of my images. That's okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep Go ahead. Go ahead. T too much talking. Yeah, I go think ahead. these are, yeah, coming kind of. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just got to let it run. Okay. Let me know Go if ahead. you want to stop somewhere. Yeah, and I'll tell you. Oh, well, it's stop. upside downer. <laughs> That's no, it's actually right side up. It's a card. Uh, now just stop there for a second. Okay. So, so this is. Um, I'll just tell you about. This really is an authentic image. It's an authentic portrait, because this guy Cote, he he's he's from the prairies originally. He was a pilot, came out, works out of Prince Rupert. He flies the, you know, his his, his uh, flight group of, uh, uh, he's got six beavers up there. This man is so proud of what he does and so good. Um, but this is this is an authentic image. I mean, he's just so happy. He's around his aircraft. I've been asking about how he's got his thing so nicely tuned. And anyway, so just focus on that. Make sure that you go to places that you know the people, you, you know what they do, and you can't help but have an authentic image. Uh, go ahead. And then one more image after that. Next one. So I was an orthopedic surgeon. I trained two of the surgeons that are in this image. So we had four female surgeons um, 
uh, graduating that year, which was big in those days. The ladies weren't, you know, as productive graduating as they are now. Now it's 50-50 guys to girls coming out of, uh, you know, surgery programs. But um, they had a formal portrait done the day before, but none of them have a, that picture up. They've all got this one that I took um, because they just felt that it was, it was authentic is what they did. Next yeah. image, please. And they've also got the second one around, which is where they spent their time in, in, um, in the operating rooms. And, and uh, uh, it's cheating in the operating room because you got $30,000 lights to work with. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Next uh, image. Uh, uh. Uh, so being prepared is a good thing too. When I did one of the physio uh, shoots, I came to the next stall and I saw, just go back one if uh. you could. And I saw this hunk of hunk of in there and I asked him, hey, can we take your image? And of course, he uh, says, what for? I said, well, it's be the possibly for the website. And, and I'm more than happy to get an image. He says, sure. So, you know, I just, you know, had the equipment along. And under five minutes, we had his image up and done. So a couple of strip lights behind him, um, a grid over top of him. I know my metering, my distance, got it with the first shot. And boom, on you move. So I did three images, and and uh, he loves it. He's got a big one up in his in his house, which he got for free because, I mean, I wasn't contract on a contractual basis to do that. Okay, uh, you can slide through the next couple of slides. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think we can start moving ahead a fair bit here. Yeah. Wait, wait, hit a cowboy. Just keep. Oh, there it yeah. is. Yeah. So, so I do a lot of. You might think I do a lot of a little bit of everything, but. I just love so much imagery and one of my favorite things is is the rodeo um, but i do my very best to always have the rodeo person right in my face i've got a successful image of i got six eyes looking at me two from the horse two from the steer and two from the cowboy like right in the in the game of it next image please and i really 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 enjoy you know the intensity of the of the rodeo keep going but whenever possible, I love to be right in the middle of the action, like right up the nostrils of the horses, if you can. And um, this one, I'm actually shooting. Um, uh, that's okay. Just stay, stop at that one for a second. But being right in the moment of it, this is an internationally famous um, rider, Debbie Galley, and she's you know been a world champion. Um, and this is, I think, one eightieth of a second. So I'm panning uh, on this particular image. Are we breaking up on transmission? No, nope, no, nope, you're good. No, nope. okay. Um, so, uh, but you've got to be confident enough that you can follow her at a slow speed. The only thing that's focused in this whole image is your face. So, but it, it adds to the intensity of it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, next image, please. Let's finish off with a couple of comparisons. Um, Ansel Adams, um, yeah, just stop at this one. At Ansel Adams, just let's comparatively, somebody that we all revere, but his great thing was that he photographed what he really knew and what he was deeply you know, passionate about. So um, he had very tough economic times, uh, but he always remained authentic to what he did. He brought what was largely unknown in the 40s to the rest of the world. I mean, they, nobody knew what the Snake River was in Europe in 1940. It was sort of the somewhere in the west of the States, but he documented in his era, which we all have the capability of doing. So what may seem banal to you, make sure you embrace it, photograph it well, and archive it. Next slide, please. He was a great conservationist, too. I've got so much time for, for him. Um, and, you know, we, we've all got for this documentation our own contribution. Um, you know, you want to be authentic to what you're doing, but being able to really document the present era what's around you what's going on what was happening during covid so important you know don't negate it and you probably already got a lot of it in your hard drives so you know be be willing to assemble it and present it to the world um, everybody really wants to see that and it may seem a little bit trite you think or banal but it's waiting to be you know exposed to the rest of the world embrace it just shoot what you know shoot what's around you you can't help it uh, but win on it uh, next slide, please. This is Michael Adams, who's Ansel Adams' son, who is um, one of my ski buddies. And so I call him a tripod carrier because he had to endure carrying his dad's tripod up the hill when his dad was asleep in the station wagon. His dad would come up, you know, after the dew and the cold was over and the tripod carrier had really done all the work already. So 
anyway, it's kind of interesting. He was up with his son, so the grandson of Ansel Adams, who now runs the uh, his entire collection, was up there too. So wow. it was really fun listening in on sort of the whole development and just what it was really like to sell coffee tins with Ansel Adam pictures on it, which they did in destitute times. And, you know, they sold, you know, the equivalent of stickers. They, they sold at roadsides. It wasn't always gravy for, for Ansel Adams and his career. Next image. This is not my image, but it's an authentic image. It's Don McGregor, who's a great portrait photographer in, in Richmond. He's internationally known. If you go around the rest of the world, everybody asks about Don McGregor in town. People would say, who is that? But, um, you know, it's an authentic image. It's what he knows how to do so well. You know, how he creates beauty with mm -hmm. natural backgrounds and just where the lighting is. It's for him. This is, you know, something he produces. Next image, please. As his uh, authentic, authentic work. It's all lighting. Um, the lighting is just incredible. The lighting is absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've got a, an old man's brain fart here, but um, in uh, he's from uh, Manitoba, from Winnipeg. Um, sorry about that. It, it'll kill me because I'll get it in a second. But anyway, a picture of a cat. In a, in a, this is the kind of thing that this uh, photographer is superb at. And image after image comes out with clean lines and beautiful, soft. You just kind of want to pick this little cat up and, and cuddle it. Everything about it works extremely well. Mm -hmm. So I, Bruce, Bruce Hendricks is the name of the photographer, sorry. So, but, but Bruce is superb. For him, this is his authentic work. Next image, please. Oh. Um, now, a lot of people will know Chris Morris around town. He's a instructor at Langara. He's a, uh, been to 10 Olympics photographing. He um, worked for, for a lot of the different uh, boards for years. He had a huge stock Im imagery still teaching um, and very a generous educator. But he, um, uh, this is an authentic image for him. He went across Baffin Island three years ago now, skied across it and imaged as he went. But he's, he's a person that knows how to get himself into the, into the moment of what he's actually doing. And each of you has that same capacity. Each of you could show me an image or two that would blow me away because of how much you know about antique cars or how much you know about bowling you know it, it it is it's incredible but who you are already are the images that you want to really focus on and manifest in the rest of your years next image please so um <clears throat> you have to when all is said and done no matter what criticism you get you have to be comfortable with the image that you produced and um you know it, it's um it's really quite, next image please, it's really quite something to come up with an image that you're very, very happy and proud of regardless. This image of mine got absolutely hammered in, in go back one if you could. Oh. It just got absolutely hammered in, in competitions and things. Um, well, first of all, it is a single shot. Nobody can believe it, but we, we, we got her done. Um, but it's, again, it's minus 20, it's midnight, it's, you know, completely black when the image was taken because it's a long exposure of the Milky Way and things. But, you know, um, I got a lot of criticism for this and, and people said it's not a very good composite. In fact, it's a single image. So, <laughs> you know, it's sort of, you, you got to kind of eat back on that and yeah. that's okay. They, yeah. they just, that's how they see it. Next image. Um, so, you know, you, you've got to define your place of who you are in photography. And um, you're going to ascend with your photography into that actual space once you've got it figured out. Next image, please. So make sure that you judge your career as a photographer, not by your results of how much money you made or how you know how you did. You just you know just take it forward with the um, the authentic images that you created and feel comfortable. Next image, please. And so I just leave you with the, the thoughts that um, being a great photographer is all about your life experience and what you extend into your into your photography. Again, I have no conflicts of interest. Any um, areas that I've mentioned in here have not been for promotion by myself or any gain whatsoever. Thank you. Okay. I'll be quiet. Wow. What a show. Let me let me t bring you back here, um, Paul. And uh, it, that, that was an incredible presentation. I just uh, loved all that information. Now you have so much 
to, to share with uh, photographers and it's just so great that you you're able to do that um, do you still have some time if I if I ask a couple of people maybe to come on with us and you know, can you take some questions from us or, or, or are you okay in time I, I I'm an open book go to it okay yep. well listen let me I'm gonna put a, a link out uh, in the chat and uh, anybody that wants to come in come join us um, and uh, talk to us um, uh, and anybody else out in the chat please put your questions uh, in there ask the questions away Paul's going to be here to answer them and uh, so just uh, let us know uh, what you have but uh, I'm just I was just uh, mesmerized by all that information that you had uh, for us uh, uh, and uh, you know it's just so so great you know Paul to, to have that and uh, I've taken some courses from Chris uh, and he was an incredible instructor you know so I haven't it's, seen it's him Chris in the last Chris. while yeah. Christopher Morris yeah, yeah. so uh, I have uh, someone's coming in here let me just bring bring him in and uh, we're gonna go and come back we've got Wayne Wayne's on hey, uh, Wayne. hello Wayne yeah. nice to see you hey incredible presentation Paul uh, I haven't talked to you for some years but uh, I think last time I talked to you I phoned you up and was talking about pocket wizards but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good but, for you. Uh, yeah. Just just incredible uh, photos. Uh, I had seen a few of them, but uh, certainly not all of them. And uh, uh, very impressive. Mm -hmm. You well, have I would some great that, skills. I would predict that anybody on this session tonight could put a presentation like that together that would blow me out, out of the water because everybody has their own expertise. And the trick is just, you know, really focusing on who you are and what you you know what you want to do and, and really amplifying it I think that's the thing you know when, when you when you talk about authentic imagery is is is, is really for the photographer to find out what they really what they are you know and and, and uh, it goes back to uh, what you've done in, in terms like for with Wayne I mean uh, being a, a, a police officer for all those years I mean again as he'd be able to, to get in get some incredible images and, and he is also doing that because he's on the the what odd squad or something wayne for with the police department for photographing and videos yeah, that, that, yeah yeah we do uh videos for uh commercially uh for uh some of the government departments uh but also uh the guys that started it uh, have been down in the downtown east side for many years and uh, they document a lot of the uh issues that are going on down there so uh, i was uh, quite impressed with your uh, uh talk on or a few words on street photography because that's one of my favorite things to do and uh, probably don't do enough of it and uh, but i'm hoping that the good weather uh, comes soon and <laughs> we'll all be able to get out do some uh, time lapse and some long exposures mm -hmm. yeah yeah wonderful yeah I was yeah. just looking to see if I had the book from his new book from Steve Simon here. Let me do an infomercial for him again. Yeah. Like you just, I can't think of the blessing that we have in town, having a talent like that around. He's also economically per, per hour of activity, very reasonable. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to take your street shooting to the next level, go hang out with Steve Simon for a while. Yeah. He's the yeah. best. Actually, I, uh, I attended one of his lectures, uh, via the PPOC back about uh so oh, Frank what is it well six or seven years ago yeah something we like that yeah, uh, yeah 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 going and uh he was incredible there's no doubt about it uh he puts together uh, a very good presentation mm -hmm. not quite as good as yours but uh it's oh no. no he's <laughs> he's in, he's in another world the other thing too is that if you do a course like that you have to be responsible you have to turn your homework in and <laughs> focusing that and organizing it is is really a very substantive thing i know if i'm doing a say when i worked with canadian press or i'm at the olympics boy at the end of the 100 meters you better have some homework to hand in or you're you're gone so yeah it's good I to know. work on we had we had taken some street photography uh of, this is going back quite a ways with uh, from kathleen hinkle and you might know know her yeah, paul yeah. And, yeah. uh, and 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 uh, I think we had a question in the audience was asking about whether we asked for permission, 
And when we took the, we went down Gravel Street taking photos of people down Gravel Street. And, and um, you know, we just, we took the photos, but uh, she says, you know, if somebody asks you, you know, like, what, what are you doing this? Why are you doing, just tell them that, you know, you're doing as a class. Your instructor asked uh, for, for us to take a photo of, of a person and blah, blah, blah. And so, and it actually was pretty, pretty easy, you know, to take it. People didn't have yeah. no problem, you know, just, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but, you know, I think, you know, what you were saying is when you ask permission for sometimes, you lose that, uh, that edge of that person, that photography that you could have yeah. had without having the permission. Because as soon as you ask, they're, they're, they're posing. And, right. and, and you want to get, kind of get away from that, you yeah. know, to, to yeah. make, it, make it authentic again, you know, so. Make it authentic, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I think that's it. I don't know if we've got any other questions and from the audience to, to come in here. Um, I know we've got, uh, uh, we still, have, we dropped off. We had about uh, 19 people watching. We got down to about nine. So before people leave, uh, just hit that like button would be great uh, in there. But uh, hey, um, I'm just going to go and let me put you back here. And I, again, Paul, I want to say thank you very much for that presentation, it was incredible. Um, and uh, I will, I, th I think I have a raw uh, video of this. I can, I'll, I'll send it to you without uh, going through the YouTube. You can cut whatever you want from it. If you want to use it for a presentation, you're welcome to do it. I'll forward that for you and uh, uh, it'll be great. But anyway, I just want to say thank you very much, you know, for, for coming and, and uh, it, was, it was just great to, to listen to your, uh, wealth of information that you can pass on to to us and and uh, i look forward to coming up whistler in the next while once this thing's over and and uh taking some uh photography with you uh out in the outdoors i think i look more forward to going yeah, to coast costa rica uh, hey, <laughs> yeah i'd love it you know like i say as soon as that opens up again where we'll be going down but uh it, it's such a cool place too to to go down and and uh the people uh, the environment, everything, you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. so. But, but I just implore everybody, don't forget about your backyard. That's you right. Know, discharge yeah, yourself with you. responsibilities yeah. and go out and shoot right in your neighborhood and right yeah. in your province. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I agree 100%, you know, so. It, uh, but anyway, I think we will leave it there. I'm going to, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, great, uh, Mike was saying, great photo, Paul. Uh, and again, my, uh, Wayne was here, my wife, Tina, thank you. Drum and Detect uh, was here. B&B, &B, Larry, Leslie, uh, and Karen. And there was a host of other people that didn't log in, but I know they were there watching. So it, uh, I want to say thanks for coming by. Uh, we're going to try to get uh, somebody up again for next Tuesday. Maybe uh, um, a food photographer would be kind of cool to, to bring on and, and uh, uh, and talk about some food photography. But anyway, Paul, I just, like I say, thank you very much for taking the time um, uh, to spend with us. And uh, this is a great media to, to do this, you know? I mean, you know, we're all spread out, but uh, we can uh, be instantly in contact with one another, which is fabulous, you know, so. But thank you very thank much. Thank you. I will, best, of, yeah. best of luck on your metal hunting. You betcha. And I'm gonna kind of let everybody out uh on there and uh did i just had another comment here let me just go down here um catch up oh mike couldn't log in sorry oh gained mike was all has problems logging in but uh, anyway i will say good night and everybody can let themselves out uh and don't let that door hit you in the butt good night everybody thanks, thanks very much okay. thanks again paul thank you okay great to see everybody